David. All right. Um, good morning. Um, good afternoon. Whatever. I think it's morning, everybody. Um, thank you. Thank you for coming. Sitting at one stage, you know, you sort of feel, you know, re retiring. You know, get going. So there's three people in the room, so it's lovely to a few more people. And then it will lead to chaos problems, all sorts of things, but at what stage I'm going to invite you to leave the room. You may have left voluntarily by then. You, you are allowed to leave the room as, as part of the part of the second exercise if you want. My worry is once I let you do that, you don't come back. I uh, have kind of left and, 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 uh, and the lesson doesn't work. Um, what I want to be today, I suppose, is, is be a bit um, controversial. Um, I'm a kind of hardened cynic, old soldier in this game. I'll give a brief introduction about me. I'd really rather call those, you know, talk about myself. I've kind of been in this, the game of entrepreneurship education for about 10 years. I'm into very much an old established university, Queen's University, Belfast, um, which had got funding to do this. It's about a £600,000 club back because they had five students doing entrepreneurship. And I was asked to kind of sort things out or, or die. Um, so I, I developed all these sorts of approaches. Uh, we probably, to, be, to be honest, I didn't really know what I was doing. I tried things, I feel I was very entrepreneurial in a very non-entrepreneurial environment. And a lot of them worked, they all got embedded in the curriculum about all these types of stuff. So I kind of find myself, um, I do feel maybe a, a bit of fraud, people that know me, I mean, you maybe see my exercise, and I forgot some of my props from my exercise today, and, 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 and whatever, but it, it kind of worked. Uh, Queen's One Entrepreneur University year 2009, and, and I probably got in the award cycle. And I, I don't know what awards are, the first one was a, um, a National Kitchen Fellowship in Higher Education Academy in 2007. If you get nothing else today, it's a good idea to win awards, because that really helped in Queen's. They thought, Maybe this madman rushing round, doing all this rubbish, maybe it has some rigour, but that's almost the one lesson you can kind of t uh, t uh, take, a take away from uh, today. And it's kind of culminated um, uh, at the Entrepreneur University um, Higher Education Academy, who I'd recommend you work with. He'd been very good to me when, when I got their award for most innovative teacher last year. And then I managed to spend five minutes talk, uh, with the Queen in, in March because I got an OBE. So it's kind of all over for me now. I think it's the only way is the only way is down, and um, I've made lots of enemies within my institution at the time, as you will as an entrepreneur. Entrepreneurship education, except that people won't like you because you might change curriculum, you might change the students, you might take them out of their cozy way, and let's just hope you know you're really going to have to be entrepreneurial um, yourself and going along. I want to talk about, about an entrepreneurial educator, but the title. Of, the, of today's session really is you are an entrepreneur. I believe passionately now and only through lots of, lots of lessons that you have got to challenge um, your students assumptions, curricular or extracurricular, as to whether they are entrepreneurial or not. Um, we all do, I just come from a very good session and I use social enterprise to embed the humanities I wrote the book, The Factor, about be enterprising, prove your career, or start a little business, or social enterprise, do, you do that, and, and, and I believe in that, in that choice, but I believe it kind of diluted that, that it, it, it sometimes get lost, that, that as, as Paul Hannan said in his um, foreword in, in, in the document, we're trying to make our students, that the vast majority of them when they come out, that they feel they are in charge of their future. They feel that they are an entrepreneur, not necessarily in the sense that they're going to make mega box or run a business, but they can create their destiny. They are almost a business, even if they end up taking a job, where they will create, make things happen, so, you know, and, and those skills. And I, and I do think it's a danger of losing it. It's, it's not easy, because we've got to take all these softly, softly approaches. Um, and I also want to kind of um, make the point, if you, if you have already got, I'm sure, that you need to be entrepreneurial. Um, that the very skills, the very things you're asking them to do, you really must use them and you must sharpen them up. You might think you've, you, you, you've, you've got, it, got it all. Um, maybe you think it's, um, you know, it's, a di it's, a, it's a different environment because you are their role model. And the key pedagogy, if you like, curriculum or extracurricular is about um, them doing things, you facilitating it. But you're their role model. And you might say, oh, 
I'm not going to go, but here's so and so, he's made multi millions, or here's so and so, social enterprise. But they want you. They don't care what you know, you've run about, your, but your credibility is how you are as a person, or the very things you're pushing them to do. Do you do them? Are you prepared to do? Are you pushing, are you pushing yourself? So, to that effect, this is your first test now. Everyone stand up. Um, and could you call it? Stand up. No, okay, stand up. <laughs> you are allowed to sit down, not yet, Colin. You are allowed to sit down if you have ever done any of these things. Have you ever sold anything? Good. Have you ever had an idea? Have you ever networked? Have you ever failed at anything? Okay, we've all passed. So, so, don't know about you sitting down. You're sitting down, that's okay. <laughs> see, see me afterwards, I've kind of got a spital entrepreneur injector kind of um, button just in case you brought him through that. I was at the end. That's on the next slide. So, what I'm doing, I do versus this with students. Um, you know, it's, it's this realization, you know, what everyone goes, you know, entrepreneurs, that you're bo uh, they're born. Uh, you know, and yes, a lot of people, I actually believe. I'm looking a lot of work with a child psychologist now and, um, and, and, and kind of research that actually kids have all these skills. Life, us as parents maybe, secondary school, everything, knocks it out of them. Then they arrive at, at the university and the university tries to finish them off um, you know, um, as a complete robot and, and, we're, and, and we're fighting it. Um, because you know, kids do believe, they believe they can do it. I remember my son saying he wanted to be an actor at four, he wanted to be Batman. Um, um, and myself and my ex-wife, we managed to knock that out of him by the age of 12. Be realistic, <laughs> get a job, you know, you'll never, you know, you never can do, you know. And so life and, and, and does that. Are you prepared to do things, to take risks and learn from it? It's like a child maybe try, trying to walk, it kind of goes up and gets up, it falls. And it doesn't go, oh, I'll never do that again. It gets up and it learns and watches what's going on and it goes forward. That's called entrepreneurial learning. And they use what, whatever's about in the environment. Can you leverage resources? They dare to connect different things and come up with ideas, um, which we lose. Where, you know, I'm trying to try get people to get back to their creativity, particularly after the secondary school <coughs> period. Um, and they persuade and influence to get their way. Watch a child or your own children, you don't realise, you think you're teaching them, they can teach you an awful, um, an awful lot. Um, and, and, and I worry with their students who probably come out and say, yeah, that was an interesting little bit of fun, or, yeah, I'm aware of the entrepreneurial process, or, yeah, we did this nice wee thing, and, yeah, you know, yeah, social enterprise, and they get mixed up, not realising, being a social enterprise or not, you know, you have to sell things. And a nice little bit of fluffy marketing, and you have to get people to say no to you, and, and all those stuff. And we really lose that. We want them to have fun, we don't want them to hate us and make them uncomfortable. We want them to enjoy what we do, but we are trying to develop entrepreneurial skills. Um, and so I might ask you, so I, I mean, I'm kind of going where I'm trying to get them to do these things, and, and some of you might have nothing to do with the curriculum. It's even more challenging, but in the curriculum or outside the curriculum, they both have their own different things, and ideally in both, that they really do these things and learn these real lessons. Otherwise, they won't really come through. Maybe they'll learn at the next stage. Maybe we'll have done something useful and fluffy. So that's, that, that's what I want to know. Um, so yeah, go ahead, Gina. Um, but I, um, I do, there is a set of entrepreneurial skills I know more, but it's very much agreement of what they are. Creativity, ability to persuade and influence, self-management, understanding money, um, using it. Um, that, and, and, and I do believe they can't be in the cricket. And I've done crazy things in the cricket. Things if I look back and go, no, no, don't do that in 2016. Don't make for final year chemistry students. Um, get assessed for thirty percent in a module on how they how you've performed at a networking event in the curriculum at Queens. You, know, you don't do that. And I actually wanted a word for it. I didn't. I didn't understand. But if I'd known what the um, what, what the risk was, um, so that you can get them to do these things. And you hear and other people and those of us in assessment. 
those are very good stuff if you can get the assessment right and you, go, and you look at places like Palantine and uh, other types of things or disciplines <coughs> where been assessing these types of activities. Don't let the system get to you. Take it into account. If you're a complete maverick and don't, you know, <coughs> make allies and use your skills in the bureaucratic university environment, yeah, they will get you out. You, you, you've got to play a real game in your, in your work, work for the students. So the curriculum is very, very important in doing that an extra curricular. And the harder and the more real it is, but the more reflection they do on that, that's really, really good education at the highest level. <coughs> so that's a wonderful slide. So, um, enterprise skills, you're wanting them to, can they learn to recognize and take opportunities? Um, can they gather evidence? Uh, can they persuade? Can they understand everyone that's involved? And can they get money, hold on to money, and make money? And my, I, I, maybe I've seen at times by social enterprises that they develop lovely theoretical plans for, for social enterprises which they think are charities and, and don't see the difference. And they think social enterprises are great because you don't really have to get any money or make any money or do that old selling or go and get any, any, any business. And, and that's a real danger. And what I'm saying is, You've kind of got, you've got to do that. Are you doing that in your environment? The, re the rewards of an entrepreneurial education, educator are, are weird. I mean, they can't be quite good. I, I've got the awards, sometimes you get pats in the head. Sometimes you, you make enemies, but it, uh, sometimes you make money. I, I, stuff I did a day the other day, which came from stuff I did, um, which, which made me a lot of money years just, just from nowhere. But the reward is that you are sending those students out there taking charge with their future and it might never come back to you but that is usually why most of us are in the game and it might never be measured back to you but if you know you've you've done you know done something or not that's that's very important so can it can it be taught um it's this guy called Alan Gibb heard of him um so, um lot of being skills and behaviors a lot of good rigor and that's important a colleague of mine at Queen's actually don't particularly agree with her research which is the value of enterprise education is in um, creating awareness. They know there is a process. That's useful, but that's a kind of traditional academic. Keep away from the skills and the behaviours. Get them to do a fluffy business plan, say what the, what the literature is. And you may not be in that environment. I'm not saying the research but I don't agree. But I do agree, and you do have to be aware, maybe we're all aware, David Kirby, you know, um, the system does impede. It is funny, you're a person in this bureaucratic system <laughs> trying to make sense of it and help them. Um, and sometimes they're saying that somehow they hear that you've lost your funding or you're on a one year contract and, about to, and you're trying to help them. You know, there is a kind of sort of irony in, 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 in entrepreneurship in the case. But it, the literature does show it can be taught. It's very important. What we did was I brought a lot of the extracurricular stuff and, and the, the little exercise I'm going to get you to do into the curriculum. Um, so you, you get them to a networking event and perform. But I allowed them to be assessed on that. And someone said a great thing earlier, you may not be here in the last session of them, but sometimes you can't measure things. Well, that's one way of putting it in the curriculum. A lot of people would think, I remember I did a weird thing a few years ago here at Game, and a guy I was, who, who was working with, and it was a, it was a game, and he thought, well, Never, that's a nice little game, but we never have that in the curriculum in, in, in my university. You can use these extra or even real life if you build um, the, the reflection around it. It's, 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 linking, it's linking the curricular and the extracurricular is the key. The more you can get in the curriculum, the more exciting and exercises you can do, and you can drive from the curriculum into the extracurriculum. I have about, about 4,000 students, which is about 90 something percent of our final year students graduate with the Queen's Certificate in Entrepreneurship Studies through their curriculum. So with a push of a button by putting it in an assessment, whatever extracurricular thing they're going, they get involved, they take forward. And I look, uh, we now for instance have a, and again, I mean somebody copied this, nothing to do with me, the Queen's has the Queen's um, I forget, Alan Sugar's, the Queen's Apprentice Programme, QUB Apprentice. That's in the second year. And I'm one of, I play Alan Sugar in one of the, the Masoti years. Really, really, really enjoyed it. But, but um, this is in the second year, and um, the students are getting, um, I've got last year, placed with Deloitte's 500 pound of gift vouchers. They're also getting a year's fee, fees paid. 
So what a, what a kind of prize that is. I mean, nothing to do with me. One of the people in the student union, one of the students who's on the council, got it somewhere in their budget and did it, just told me the other day. But I'm already thinking, I, you know, I can bring this in, you know, I get my champions to bring this so easily into the curriculum, to, put, to get more people to think, but to get more people to experience, be it the trials, be it the failure, be it the different stages, and mixing it up, and build assessment, and, and reflection, and, and curriculum around it. And, you know, the work of people like Andy Timmer, the coffee here and stuff, is making sure that you don't need to be afraid of that. But it's integrating it where curriculum and extracurricular come together. That's where you can make a very, very powerful difference. And honestly, it can be done. Um, it's important to say that you talk about practice what we preach, preach what we practice. There is this thing, one of the views in the States would be, if you haven't you know, had a multi-million billion spin out uh, worth a zillion billion, you shouldn't be allowed anywhere near the students. And you don't want to necessarily not, there's nothing wrong with I've made money, I've made money, I've lost money, the real, it, it, it still goes on, you know, goes on. Some of you might not have run a bit, you might have social enterprise, you might just have, you might have work experience, you might be a PhD student who kind of comes through the university system, so we're all different, but put yourself out there, add to your experience and continue to add. Because it's your understanding of the real world. Um, don't be kind of, here's our role models coming in. Because it's, it's you doing things and your involvement and also the young alumni. They aren't necessarily looking, here's so and so mega um, multi-million spin out, um, age 65. They like a student maybe two, three years on who's maybe feeling or who's struggling. Who, who is putting themselves at risk is two years on from, um, from they are. But I do believe, and I suppose I call it uh, venture-based learning, it's not necessarily an amateur exam or a couple of degrees where the students run a business right through it and do modules around it. It's encouraging to do, to get out of that comfort zone, to reflect, to feel. I mean, I heard the guy, my kind of crowd guy last night, about getting people to take risks and be resilient. Are you doing that? Um, in your in your in your own world, um, and are you getting your students to do that? And the danger is maybe they all go and say, "That was great. We really loved this exciting moment." You know, you know, you, you've got them to do things that they wish they'd never done. But like, just like us, when they're pushed out of their comfort zone and experience and reflect, they quite they quite enjoy and failure and doing and, and that is a lesson. I mean, getting people to learn that business and life. Getting a job is a number scheme. It's an amazingly difficult, difficult thing to do, and and that is really something that that that, that, that they've got to pick up. So the pedagogy will drive in whatever your curricular or extracurricular. Um, the more real you can make it, the more you can get them to do things. What really worked for us, and you'll see a simple. I made a part of the simple exercise I've asked you to do. Long we got to you, <coughs> two minutes. Um, that. Um, what worked for us was a very simple creativity exercise where students come up with funny creativity things and were challenged with critical incidents and stuff in classrooms, maybe of 300 initially. Um, and then, you know, and students suddenly realised they could come up with an idea or they could make a connection. Because that had been all not out of there, you know, that can be um, an, an amazing thing where a student suddenly thinks, I can sell something. I can come up with an idea that can make. I can make it and make a difference. And I'm not, not saying we're, we're all doing it, but we've all got not to rest in our own comfort zone and 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 and, and, and test them because we're not necessarily um, doing many favours. Um, so you're the role model and you you're facilitating. You've got away, I'm doing a wee bit now stage in the stage and we've only gone about probably less than a minute and the guy will still go over a minute. Um, you know, well, you've got to move away from that. It works best when they're doing things and working on something and experimenting and learning, and you're facilitating or, or helping or, or, or whatever at a distance. And I believe, and I'm not going to do it in here, but you know, the power of where now students can create it with, with help, create a website, maybe a, create a website with them in an hour, can get them to you know, go out things, do a type of marketing, social media, go and do things straight away. It does open up very quickly some of those, some of those real life experiences that without technology um, uh, wouldn't be there. But uh, you're the role model, so it's 
creativities, finding fun and influencing, personal branding and negotiating. They're all to do. Hardest thing I find, and I don't know what you do, is getting them. And, and you, you can see that, you know, that I have maybe no problem with, with doing it. I've had to learn, I've had to brand, push, 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 look at me, look at me. Um, that's a very non Irish trait, believe it or not. We, we like to drink and party, but we are brought up to be the nice little boy or girl who says, I've really struggled with my exams. And then you have three A's and you're top in, in, um, you know, in, in A-level physics in Northern Ireland. But you said it was really hard. And you say, isn't Caroline a lovely girl? Um, not only is she really bright, but she's really modest. And I don't want to we become super brash, the opposite, and get it wrong. But that is a very powerful thing for a kid. It's true, Caroline. Well done, well done. Alright, so the challenge is how do you make the student believe? And it might have a little time to discuss that thing. Getting them to believe, and of course, uh, but I, what I want the people is to get in touch that actually you are entrepreneurial as a child. You're, you may not choose to run a business, you might choose. Life is your choice, but you are, uh, you know, you can do things, you can influence your own destiny. You've got these skills, yeah, they're maybe dead a bit with the system, you can work and build them up. And, 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 and go ahead. And, and so you are working on changing uh, belief systems, not only of your colleagues, and particularly the student. Um, building a team, the hardest bit for us as educators is at times the reward structure. Um, we, some of us who think we've done great, you know, you, you don't always someone will write you a million pound check because you're an enterprise educator. You're not, you're not uh, necessarily in it for that. Um, so you, you, you've got to make sure that you're getting what you need and uh, hopefully somebody somewhere in your institution um, that the rewards are, 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 are there for you within your system. So let's think about this type of pedagogy. And you might disagree that we can't do this or not. I want to discuss, but I'm at the stage where I believe that must be at the core. And that's been hard cynicism, loads of failure, lots of things which seem to work, work pretty good. But I do worry that the students, a lot of students still haven't got it. They've got their certificate in entrepreneurship studies and they're not really ready to create their future as much as they, uh, as much as they might have been. Okay? The last near I think we're slides there, 200. Uh, let's move on. Opportunities, and let's forget about the thing for you. There's Evolution Queen for a wonderful guy. There's me, very drunk when the time's higher. Um, but that's our good condition now. The exciting thing before we do, and when I come back to that, do the exercise now, is uh, and, and exercise based around it. Actually, there's loads of opportunities in enterprise education. You might not think it. You're in a one year contract in the university of um, let's go to sleep and not help the students. Um, and um, you, you know, you're kind of thinking, what, what am I doing here? But it, it is a big thing. Governments around the world do actually believe you might be getting that message from this conference that it is the answer. Maybe they won't think it's the answer in 10 years' time, so you must grasp you're in the right place. Um, and some of us who may be in it a few years before you um, pioneered and got so many kicks in the teeth. You may be the people who walk through the doors and take all the awards. So remember, call with me when we're running our wee social enterprise selling the big issue, you know, and you know, keep them going. We, 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 we tried in the early days. Um, so so, so that, that's, that's where we are. So now, exercise time. What I want you to do, um, I'm calling in, you are my fluffy assistant. Um, if we could find out, I'm not sure, I've only about 39 copies, there may only be 39 people in the room. I want you to get, you can stay at your tables maybe, but I want you to get in teams of five, five or six. Um, it's a small exercise I want you to do. Alright, so I'll, give, I'll keep going right. Okay, that's alright. Yeah, that's alright. Someone else passes the kick and the Some of my colleagues exercise on it. Exercise. I've got like seven more copies. A couple of them just up here. Like some? Do you want to like some? Who has not at least got an exercise at their table? Let me run through the exercise. And the exercise is chaos, so that's fine. It's weird. And it's like we will kind of go through the day. Just, just one minute. Um, um, sorry, that's not a bit traditional. My pedagogy. Shush, I'm the teacher. That's why I want the award. 
no, let's read, let me read this to you. Um, this is based in real life. Um, I've been talking to people, some people will say, uh, you may have noticed, you may not read the Times higher, um, but it's coming through, lots of these private universities are starting to appear. Uh, and I think one of the dangers, it may be good or bad, it's what based my example on is, they're going to come in and realise enterprise education is, is hot. Enterprise education could make us a lot of money. My own university, I, at one stage I took a loan, we're an FE college running our certificate of entrepreneurship, so I was going to earn Queen's a million pound a year, just for me maybe spend a day, two days, and go through samples of the, of the work. The Queen's refused, because the Queen's said so we'd rather have a research collaboration. So th that's the type of thing that's scary, if you like, with the private universities are coming, profit making, that is coming in. So let's imagine it's a couple of years' time, and this is going to happen for, for one of you, one of you. Uh, um, but Polson University is, is a, an imaginary university. Um, so instead of you being a student, this is a bit like an exercise I would give students. You are enterprise education department, you've been brought in for, you applied for this job and a team and you're, you're interviewed. And you're being observed. This is an assessment centre. I am observing you, myself. Uh, Colin, you can observe yourself, but I want you to observe people too, as my humble assistant. Um, and you're being observed. And what I want you to do, instead of students, if you're dealing with nursing, dealing with physics, they look at problems in nursing, whatever. You're enterprise educators of various sorts. What I want you to do is spend 10 minutes, I'm going to keep you to that 10 minutes, so someone's got to lead in your team, 10 minutes on coming up, discussing the problems that enterprise educators have. And we could go on for hours. We don't stick to the 10 minutes, and that's the danger, we may all still be there at, at lunchtime. And we just have to go through lunchtime then. Um, don't want to miss your lunch. So what are the problems that enterprise educators have, and what are the problems that students studying or enterprise educate? The reason why I'm asking you to do that, I'm sure you've all done versions of exercise in that, there are problems there. If someone come up with a product or service or an answer, there's, um, you know, there's the opportunity. It could be a book, it could be a learning product, it could be an app, it could be a course, it could be a master's program, it could be whatever. So you're thinking of the problems and then I want you to come up with four services and five products. And someone needs to describe and, and put this down. Now there are sheets, there is split chart paper, um, if anyone needs and a, and a pen, so someone needs to be your scribe. So you're thinking of the problems and you're trying to come up with a few problems. Don't get too worried spending, let's spend three hours seeing what the real problems are or, or discussing it. You're just kind of getting this exercise. Because the other part I'm wanting you to do, select your best product. Then I'm wanting you to spend 20 minutes, if you can, try and do something real. I want you, I'm not asking you to do all these, demonstrate all these skills. But I want you to maybe try one or two of them. I'm going to give you a piece of paper with money from David Gibson. It should have been from my wedding six weeks ago, David and Hillary's bank from the casino at the wedding. I lost it the way over, okay. So it's a piece of paper with some money, with some money on it, and, and I owe you. That is your money. Um, you've got money, so you're starting off with that. It's 400,000, uh, it's be about 400,000, uh, I think, per group. Um, and then I want you to, to your group, to, you come up with the idea, come up with the idea first, and then I think with that idea, can we do anything here in the next 20 minutes to show David and Colin that we've networked, that we've made any money, that we've sold something, that we've done a deal, that we've failed, that we've taken a risk. And I will award you, we will be watching you, and we will give a group some money if you have. We might take all your money away if you haven't. We'll also deal you a few, maybe give someone a piece of good news and a piece of bad news from a bit of critical activity. So we, at the end of the session we will have, uh, hopefully, where well, we're going to challenge with everyone for two minutes, but that you'll be able to um, tell us what your product is, um, what you think your money is, and, and most of all, tell us what you learned. Did you do anything enterprising? Can you show to me that you could sell? Can you show to me that you could do a deal? So it's a simple thing, if you want to do something real, that's okay. So you see some of the things here, use the resources of the conference. If you want to send someone out of your room to go and do a deal, to go and do something, anything that demonstrates that your group actually um, has taken it beyond certain door, yeah, the ideas uh, are. You, you will win if, you, if you've made a good effort, even if you've done it and failed. You know, don't lie. You might lie and say, yeah, we want to talk to people and that, you know, so that you, you might, you know, you, you might win for that. So, 
you're you're working, you're trying to demonstrate behaviour. Uh, you're you're trying to be enter enterprising. Obviously, there's more market for it. if you do a sale or if you do a deal than if you sit and talk about doing market research um, and, and networking. But there's a fair amount of money which you will be, be then then awarded. And then I want you to say, have you learned anything? That was all complete little chaos as it was. I'm trying to create chaos, so, so that, that's all right. Um, David, do you